Solve each equation, if possible, using the zero product property. Check the answers. All right, so the zero product property tells us if we have a product of numbers that is equal to zero, so if a times b is equal to zero, then a is equal to zero, or b is equal to zero, or both are equal to zero. So let's look at this first example. We have 18x is equal to zero. So notice that that is a product. This says 18 times x is equal to zero. Then by the zero product property, 18 is equal to zero or x is equal to zero. Well, let's look at this statement. Can 18 equal zero? Never. 18 is never equal to zero. So we th that's useless to us. Or x is equal to zero. So, well, that makes sense. x can equal zero. And so now let's check our work. is, so go back to the original equation, is 18 times 0 equal to 0? Obviously yes. So x is equal to 0 is a solution of the equation. Let's look at another example. 9 times x plus 6 is equal to 0. All right, notice now the left hand side is written as a product. 9 times x plus 6 is equal to 0, and we can write it, you can write it with the dot if you need to. So then, by that zero product property, since we have a product of numbers equal to 0, 9 is equal to 0, or x plus 6 is equal to 0. Can 9 ever equal 0? No, it cannot. Can x plus 6 ever equal 0? Well, if we subtract 6 from both sides, then that tells us that x would equal 6. So is x, is x equals 6 a solution? Well, let's check our work. Is 9 times uh, negative 6, sorry about that, is 9 times negative 6 plus 6 equal to 0? Well, following the order of operations on the left, that would give me 9 times 0 which is equal to 0, so that checks out. And so x equals negative 6 is a solution of the equation. C, m minus 7 times m is equal to 0. All right, let's uh, notice that this equation is written as a product, so then m minus 7 is equal to 0, or m is equal to 0. Can m minus 7 equal 0? Well, sure. If we add 7 to both sides of the equation, then we find that m minus 7 is 0 and m equals 7. Can m equal 0? Well, yeah, m, the m is equal to 0 when m is equal to 0. So it looks like we have two solutions for this equation. All right, so let's check that. So we have to do two checks. One for m equals 7. Is 7, subtract 7, times 7 equal to 0? Following the order of operations, that would give us 0 times 7 on the left-hand side, which is 0, and 0 equals 0. So that checks out. Now if m equals 0, we would have 0, subtract 7, times 0. Is this equal to 0? Following the order of operations, 0 subtract 7 is negative 7 times 0, which is 0, and so that checks out. And so we have two solutions of the equation, 7 or 0. Exercise D, we have 8 plus x is equal to 0. Now we can't use the zero product property here because we can't write this as a, because it's not written as a product. 
And in fact, this is a linear equation, and we learned how to solve linear equations back in a previous chapter. Now all we do is subtract 8 from both sides, and that tells us then that x is equal to negative 8. And we can easily check our solution. Uh, 8 plus negative 8, is this equal to 0? And yes, it is. So x equals negative 8 is the solution of this equation.